Hello, this is a video presentation of editing CR2 format pictures in Digital Photo Professional 4 software. So if you're uh, using a Canon product, a Canon camera, uh, many of these cameras uh, will have the option to shoot in CR2. I tried to open them in UF RAW, which is kind of an add-on to GIMP, um, but it really wasn't good. You, had to, you have to configure a lot of system stuff and there are some problems, which you can find solution on forums, I suppose, but I just gave up after a while. It was just too cumbersome for me. But then I discovered that you can use Canon's proprietary software uh, if you own a Canon product. All you need is a serial number. So, how to get the Canon software? Uh, first we're gonna go to the Canon site, just canon.com and we'll probably end up at the global site and it's not that easy to navigate around to be honest because they're just showing you very nice pictures but don't exactly tell you where to go for um, some kind of support. Um, so you should first go and click this uh, kind of like a globe icon here on the top right and then you select your region. We can go with North America. I'm not from US but I'll just choose US because probably that's uh, where um, a lot of folks are located and you go to support. Um, and then you go to this section, you have drivers and downloads right there. Uh, then you type in the kind of camera you have. So I'm going to type just G7X because that's what I have. Um, and you it should prompt you with a correct full name. Uh, I have the Mark 1, so that's why I'm going to select. It doesn't really matter because uh, any kind of camera will get this support. Um, but you have to select one because obviously you need to present a, um, an appropriate serial number once you want to download. And right there you can see um, you have Digital Photo Professional 4.5.4.10 for Windows. That's the latest version and you just um, download this and that's where you have to provide your serial number from the product. So let's say you're from Europe, um, that is even more probable given that I'm from this uh, area. So let's click and you can choose any kind of country you come from. If it's not on the list you just select other countries regions and then the sites uh, look pretty similar in all languages but you can go to support and then you select uh, software and then you'll have to provide again your camera type I already have selected PowerShot so it remembers so I'm just going to click this one and you'll go to the driver section um, but in the driver section the software is not there it's in the software section obviously and uh, if you scroll down, there you see Digital Photo Professional 4.5.10. Then you just uh, download. You accept the conditions um, of the license use, and then you have the serial number page again. And from there on, once you submit the serial number page, um, you will get uh, the download, just uh, direct download uh, from the browser to your um, desktop and then the installation is pretty straightforward. Um, it's just a standard installation wizard which you can use. Um, for some additional instructions they give you this pop-up window once you close the, win the download window um, but I think you'll be able to navigate fairly easily. Um, for the basics of it, um, I suggest you go to the Canon tutorials, which are also on YouTube. They are really nice. But the, what I found is that they present an ideal scenario where you just have to make minor twitches. This is not what's going to happen if you're an amateur photographer shooting in the wild. The RAW files, the CRT, CR2 files, will, have, will give you much broader options and will give you much more possibility to fix your pictures, simply because they contain more data if you want to have a look how I do it and how I try to save my pictures which are sometimes really awful well uh, let's go so the first thing uh, I usually do is I filter my pictures and this is actually for the uh, Polish mountains through hike video um, for the final part so this is uh, I'm, I mark those pictures as five and just select which pictures you want to have uh, presented on your screen and just switch the filter on and there you have it all of them 
So now, now all I do is just press Ctrl A. Yeah, it's 98 pictures selected out of a 576 total. So these are the pictures I think I'll be using. Um, because I have already rejected the ones that were truly hopeless. And then I can just select them all and click Edit Image. That lines them up nicely in here, uh, which is really, really useful. Mm, and, this is, and this is the way I suggest you start editing your pictures. I'll show you in a minute why uh, I say that. So this is the first picture. Obviously, it has a problem with the blown out sky. You can click this button here, which shows uh, you the highlight or shadows warning areas. And as you can see, these are the areas that are actually lost. But all the other things can be recovered. So, just right off the bat, the first thing I usually do is these here, uh, these controls. Because they allow you to control the exposure for shadows and highlights. So let me show you what happens if I reduce the highlights. You see, you, we regained those details around the clouds in here, although not the colors. That's the problem with, uh, with blowing out your pictures, that um, you lose some of the details, the color goes first. We can now adjust the highlights a bit, um, but we still need to reduce the overall brightness of this picture. So what we can do, we can do it in, uh, in two methods, either brightness adjustment, and now you see we've regained even more detail from uh, from the sky. Or the way I do it is using the curves here. Now this looks complicated and really scary, but you don't have to be scared. What that tells you is the bottom part, um, how much shadows you have. You see in here there are not a lot of shadows, so I can clip it. And that's what's called crushing the blacks. So I make blacks even more black. If I go too too far, too far, you can see I just start to lose details from the shadows. So in the histogram here, it shows you where the data are. All this part was empty for me because I just overexposed the picture. And as well in here, you can adjust how bright the highlight is. The more you clip it, the, the brighter the highlight. Now you see in here, I lost my data that's how, that's what that was clipped that's overexposed that's blown out so i don't have any more data that i could have here if i used um a lower uh, f stop a, a higher f stop or or a shorter exposure time and this in the middle the bar in the middle shows you how bright the overall picture needs to be so what i usually do in blown out pictures is i go all the way to the to here to regain as much details as i can and then just adjust the brightness. There, are, there is two ways to correct your saturation. First thing is simple, simplest. It's the color palette. It's really useful a lot of times, and it's simple to use. So it's just you know those bars, which you can move around, and I just up the saturation quite a lot in this case. It is, does work because you can see immediately that my green areas and my yellow areas were quite are looking quite nice right now and I have regained some of their liveliness. If you click split vertically you can now see both pictures at the same time. The problem is that the sky isn't really blue in here and although on that day it was quite hazy and it wasn't that blue obviously it wasn't this strange color but it's right now kind of orange. And the best way to deal with that is to go to this adjust image tone curves uh, part and play around a bit with the curves again. Now I know it looks scary, but it's really simple to use. So um, let's just get to it. In here, what I will do is I'll select, this is the RGB selection. So obviously red, green, and, bl and blue, the three main colors that you're using. So I'm going to use blue. And as you can see, there's a lot of it in the shadows because that represents how bright, the brightness, so luminosity rather. So the blues are in the in the shadows, and that's because they're probably somewhere in here. Um, and there's also some blue in, in at the end, but because the sky was clipped, it was blown out, there is nothing there. So what we can do is move the blue in here, and that immediately shows you all the blues in the sky. The problem with that is that you get the far distance also kind of bluish, and that's a natural effect. It actually is how you see things because of the haze and how the atmosphere reflects light. 
but we don't really want that because it creates this artificial kind of feeling so what we can do is just at the control point just by clicking on it and just just this a touch you see now be careful not to go too far but that's more or less the effect we want to achieve now obviously the other effect is that if you remove the blue from other parts of the picture it will make it more green and, and red in effect also more yellow so we have to play around with this quite a bit and find a sweet spot and here you can use the um, the three for each colors you have three controls you have the hue which is represented by these colors here if you move to the left you will have the lighter blue like this one if you go to the right it will be more of a marine blue now in here you don't really see that much of an effect but let me present this on a yellow see what happens if I turn to yellow it goes more to red really because the yellow is already mixed green and red right so if you turn yellow to more yellow then it will be more red if you go the opposite direction it's going to go green on you but that doesn't look natural so we don't want to touch yellows in here this is the perfect spot but we do want to adjust the blues maybe go move purple into the yellow uh, into the bluish area there we go that's that's nice the purple was the culprit here alright I'm gonna leave it at this this is the end of part one thank you for watching